after studying this module you shall be able to know about the brain stem reticular formation learn ascending and descending types of reticular formation and functions of reticular formation identify parts of the brain constituting brain stem reticular formation the brain stem is the posterior part of the brain adjoining and structurally continuous with the spinal cord it is usually described as including the medulla oblongata or the myelencephalon pons which is part of metencephalon and midbrain mesencephalon less frequently parts of the diencephalon are included the brain stem provides the main motor and sensory innervations to the face and neck via the cranial nerves of the 12 pairs of cranial nerves 10 pairs come from the brain stem Though small, this is an extremely important part of the brain, as the nerve connections of the motor and sensory systems from the main part of the brain to the rest of the body pass through the brain stem. Most cranial nerves originate in the brain stem. The brain stem is the pathway for all fiber tracts passing up and down. from peripheral nerves and spinal cord to the upper areas of the brain the various cranial nerves that pass through brain stem are cranial nerve 1 known as olfactory nerve which exits from the cribriform plate and its function is afferent olfactory information the second cranial nerve the optic nerve exits from the optic canal and its function is afferent visual from retina the third cranial nerve oculomotor nerve exits from the superior orbital fissure and its function is efferent motor to eye and efferent parasympathetic to eye the fourth cranial nerve the trochlear nerve exits the superior orbital fissure to function as the efferent motor to superior oblique muscle of the eye v1 cranial nerve which is ophthalmic branch of trigeminal nerve exits from the superior orbital fissure and functions as the afferent sensory from upper face the v2 cranial nerve which is the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve exits from the foramen rotundum and its function is at to act as an afferent sensory from middle upper portion of face and upper jaw the v3 cranial nerve which is the mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve exits from foramen ovale to function as the efferent motor to muscles of mastication and afferent sensory from lower face and jaw the sixth cranial nerve also known as the abutens exits from the superior orbital fissure to function as the efferent motor to lateral rectus of the eye the seventh cranial nerve known as the facial nerve exits from the stylomastoid foramen to function as the efferent motor to muscles of facial expression at all act as efferent parasympathetic fibers to lacrimal and mucosal glands and also as afferent taste from anterior tongue to afferent sensory from external ear the eighth cranial nerve known as the vestibulo cochlear nerve exits the internal auditory meatus to function as afferent vestibular and auditory information from inner ear 
The ninth cranial nerve is the glossopharyngeal nerve which exits at the jugular foramen to function as efferent motor to pharynx, efferent parasympathetic to parotid gland, afferent taste from posterior tongue, afferent sensory from external ear, afferent sensory from pharynx, middle ear, carotid body and sinus. The tenth cranial nerve known as the vagus exits the jugular foramen to function as efferent motor to muscles of palate, pharynx and larynx. Efferent parasympathetic to viscera, afferent taste from larynx, afferent sensory from external ear, meninges and afferent sensory from larynx, trachea, gut, aortic arch. The 11th cranial nerve also known as the accessory nerve exits the jugular foramen to function as the efferent motor to cernocleidomastoid and trapezius. The last 12th cranial nerve known as the hypoglossal nerve exits the hypoglossal canal to function as the efferent intrinsic and extrinsic motor to tongue. Components of brain stem. The brain stem connects the cerebrum with the spinal cord. It is the most primitive part of the brain and is involved mainly in regulating vital processes. At the bottom of the brain stem is the medulla oblongata which has nerve sensors that control many vital processes such as breathing and heartbeat. Right above the medulla oblongata is the pons which connects the hemispheres of the cerebellum. Above the pons is the midbrain which controls eye movement and the size of the pupils. At the top of the brain stem is the diencephalon. The diencephalon contains the thalamus and the hypothalamus. Deep inside the brain stem is the reticular formation, a network of nerve fibers that help regulate the brain's level of awareness. It runs up from the medulla oblongata through the pons and midbrain. Sensory impulses passing through the brain stem stimulate the reticular formation, which then stimulates activity and alertness around the cerebral cortex. Brain stem reticular formation. The network of nerve pathways and nuclei throughout the brainstem connecting motor nerves and sensory nerves to and from the spinal cord, the cerebellum and the cerebrum. The figure shows the location of brainstem reticular formation. The reticular formation began to receive attention in 1909 with the anatomical brain investigations of Santiago Ramin y Cajal of Spain. Using the new silver chromate staining method developed by Golgi, he revealed the shapes of individual neurons for the first time. Cajal demonstrated the brain consists of individual cells, the neurons, and was not a continuous net or reticulum of fibers. Cajal comment on the extensive multiple branching of reticular formation as they ascended and descended through the middle of brainstem. Building on some earlier German work, J. W. Pappus in 1926 published a definite work describing the reticular formation's projections down to the spinal cord in cats. Brainstem reticular formation BSRF is vertically organized and therefore consists of a top structure co-structure. The figure shows how brain stem reticular formation is vertically organized within the brain. On top structure you have the tectum, the co-structure is the tegmentum and the basal structure is the substantial Niagara. Tectum. The tectum is located in the dorsal portion of mesencephalon. There is tectum of medulla, 
tectum of pons and tectum of midbrain. Its principal structures are superior colliculi and inferior colliculi and these structures appear as four bumps on the dorsal surface of brain stem. The inferior colliculi is a part of auditory system and superior colliculi is the part of visual system. Both superior and inferior colliculi are primarily involved in visual reflexes and reaction to moving stimuli. Tegmentum The tegmentum consists of the portion of mesencephalon beneath the tectum. It is the rostral end of reticular formation and includes certain portions. Periaqueductal gray matter. It consists mostly of cell body of neurons that surround the cerebral aqueduct as it travels from third ventricle to fourth ventricle. It controls the consequences of movements that constitute species Typical behavior such as fighting and mating. Red nucleus. It controls the three important centers, cerebrum, cerebellum and spinal cord. Red nucleus constitutes one of the two major fiber system that bring motor information from cerebral cortex and cerebellum to the spinal cord, helps in complex reflexes and coordination of three centers for maintaining balance. Ventral tegmental area or the VTA. The ventral tegmental area tegmentum is Latin for covering better known as the ventral tegmental area of psi is a group of neurons located close to the midline on the floor of the midbrain. The VTA contains neurons that project to numerous areas of the brain from the prefrontal cortex to the caudal brainstem and several regions in between. Substantia Niagara Substantia Niagara is Latin for black substance reflecting the fact that parts of the Substantia Niagara appear darker than neighboring areas due to high levels of neuromelanin in dopaminergic neurons. It contains neurons that communicate with the cordage nucleus and putamen in basal ganglia. The reticular formation itself is a phylogenetically very old and primitive system of nuclei and nervous pathways located at the core of the brain stem. It consists of two parts, an ascending and a descending formation. Oftentimes, the ascending reticular formation is defined as the reticular activating system. This definition, however, is too restrictive since it is often only associated with degrees of consciousness or alertness. Types of brain stem reticular formation. Reticular formation is functionally organized in two ways, ascending reticular formation and descending reticular formation. Ascending reticular formation. Ascending reticular activating system ARAS serves the whole cerebral cortex. The ascending reticular formation arises from cells of the posterior horn or lamina 5. Spinal reticular fibers ascend in the ventrolateral part of the spinal cord. Collaterals are distributed to large areas of the brain stem reticular formation in the medulla, pons and to a less extensive area in the midbrain. The spinal reticular fibers which terminate in the medullary reticular nuclei that is, nuclei reticularis gigantocellularis are mostly uncrossed fibers. The presence of these uncrossed fibers and of diffuse nuclei gives the system a more primitive 
and phylogenetically older appearance. This system is also more undifferentiated because it is concerned with both autonomic and motor control. Some pinoreticular fibers terminate in the pontine reticular nuclei with a bilateral distribution. Some other fibers reach the midbrain reticular nuclei. A certain number of pinoreticular fibers terminate in the rostral intralaminar nuclei of the thalamus. From there, the rostral intralaminar nuclei relay impulses to the cerebral cortex. Ascending projections from the mesencephalic reticular formation also send direct impulses to the hypothalamus through the afferent fibers of the dorsal longitudinal fasciculus and the mammillary peduncles. The cells of ARAS are fired by the collaterals from the incoming sensory pathways of the specific thalamic projection system. As a result, a delayed excitation passes from cell to cell up through the central core of the brainstem and then reaches areas of cerebral cortex. The ARAS excites the cells of cerebral cortex and lowers their threshold to incoming stimuli from other sources. The main function of the ascending reticular formation is to convey sensory stimuli like proprioception, touch, vibratory sense, pain and temperature, visual and auditory stimuli from all the sensory pathways through the ascending collateral fibers. These sensory stimuli through multisynaptic chains of neurons terminate in a group of nuclei located in the thalamus which then relays the sensory impulses to the cerebral cortex and thus keeps the brain awake. The more active the ARAS, the more aroused and alert is the animal. Quiescence of the ARAS results in low level of cortical activity, a state of sleep and a higher threshold for the cortex to incoming sensory stimulation. The descending reticular activating system reticulospinal fiber. The descending reticular formation plays a major role in the neurological modulation of visceral and somatic activities. From the hypothalamus by way of the dorsal longitudinal fasciculus and the mammillotegmental tract, it relays impulses to the autonomic nervous system and various organs. From the subcortical motor areas, it relays impulses to voluntary muscles. Posture and general muscle tone are directly related to the descending reticular formation. In fact, it appears that posture and equilibrium control are two of the most important motor functions of the reticular formation. Autonomic functions such as gastrointestinal peristalsis, glandular secretion and urinary bladder are controlled by the reticular formation of the medulla, pons and midbrain. The respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, swallowing, mastication and vomiting reflexes are all equally controlled by the reticular formation at the level of the medulla oblongata. Functions of brainstem reticular formation Situated between the top of the brainstem and the bottom area of the midbrain, the reticular formation is found close to the fourth ventricle and the cerebral aqueduct. One of the more important tasks of the formation is regulating the functions of the autonomic nervous system. This means that it is directly involved with what are commonly referred to as unconscious functions. 
it helps to automatically regulate the heartbeat breathing and the process of digesting food in the gastrointestinal tract as such the network is also key to the process of elimination and helps to regulate the process of urination and defecation various functions of reticular formation are one somatic motor control some motor neurons send their axons to the reticular formation nuclei giving rise to the reticulospinal tracts of the spinal cord these tracts function in maintaining tone balance and posture especially during body movements the reticular formation also relays eye and ear signals to the cerebellum so that the cerebellum can integrate visual auditory and vestibular stimuli in motor coordination other motor nuclei include gaze centers which enable the eyes to track and fixate objects and central pattern generators which produce rhythmic signals to the muscles of breathing and swallowing two cardiovascular control the reticular formation includes the cardiac and vasomotor centers of the medulla oblongata three pain modulation the reticular formation is one means by which pain signals from the lower body reach the cerebral cortex it is also the origin of the descending analgesic pathways the nerve fibers in these pathways act in the spinal cord to block the transmission of some pain signals to the brain four sleep and consciousness the reticular formation has projections to the thalamus and cerebral cortex that allow it to exert some control over which sensory signals reach the cerebrum and come to a conscious attention it plays a central role in states of consciousness like alertness and sleep injury to the reticular formation can result in irreversible coma in 1918 a viennese neurologist constantin von economo observed that some flu patients fell into a state of lethargy or coma before dying while others went several days without sleeping and then died when von economo autopsied the brains of these two types of patients he found that they had different types of lesions the patients who had been coma stores before their deaths had lesions in the posterior hypothalamus or the upper part of the midbrain von economo was thus the first scientist to use the term wakefulness center to refer to these two parts of brain that seem to be essential for wakefulness the patients who had experienced sleeplessness before dying had brain lesions in the preoptic area of the anterior hypothalamus which came to be known as sleep center countless autopsies subsequently showed that when a person's brain stem suffers damage whatever the cause that person falls into deep sleep or coma this finding thus showed that the brain stem also plays an essential role in maintaining the state of wakefulness 5 habituation this is a process in which the brain learns to ignore repetitive meaningless stimuli while remaining sensitive to others a good example of this is when a person can sleep through loud traffic in a large city but is awakened promptly due to the sound of an alarm or crying baby reticular formation nuclei that modulate activity of the cerebral cortex are part of the reticular activating system summary the brain stem is the portion of the brain 
consisting of the medulla oblongata, pons and midbrain that connect the spinal cord to the forebrain and cerebrum. The brain stem contains extensive fields of intermingled neuronal cell bodies and nerve fibers which are collectively termed the reticular formation. The reticular regions are often regarded as phylogenetically ancient representing a primitive nerve network upon which more anatomically organized functionally selective connections have developed during evolution. Every function that a human being performs consciously or unconsciously is controlled by some section of the brain. Reticular activating system is an important part of a human being's brain that exercises great influence over cognitive capabilities. There are two kinds of reticular formation, ascending reticular formation and descending reticular formation. The ascending reticular formation projects to the midline group of thalamus and from there information is sent to cortex. It is responsible for the sleep-wake cycle thus mediating various levels of alertness. The descending reticular formation receives information from hypothalamus and is also involved in posture and equilibrium as well as autonomic nervous activity. The reticular formation is essential for governing some of the basic functions of higher organisms.